Good morning. It is just you and me today, Evelyn. Just me and you. How about that? Well, I have a question for you, okay? If I were to stand <clears throat> right here and we were to hold each other's hand, do you think that we could stretch all the way so you could touch that white banner right there? Do you think we could make it? Okay, let's try. Come here. All right, I'm going to hold your hand. Okay, stretch, stretch, stretch. Go as far as you can. See if you can touch that banner, but you can't let go of my hand. Can you touch? Oh, so close. Almost. Okay, do you think there's a way that we might be able to do it, just me and you, and be able to be able to do it and get all the way there? How might we do that? You think we can? Because right now we're running a little short. How could we stay connected and get all the way there? Well, yeah, I don't think I can stretch my body any further. You might be able to. But you know what? Let's try this. What would happen if I took this shoelace? It's much easier than the first service. All right. Now you hold on to this. Let's see. All right, can you stand up? Can you reach it now? See if you can stretch and reach it now. <gasps> oh, yeah, you did. Hold on tight, okay? Hold on real tight. See if you can touch it. Woo! yep, there you go. Awesome. All right. So you know what? What we found out at first was that we didn't think we necessarily had what we needed to make the distance, did we? It was a little bit short. But then when we got creative, we found that there was a way we could reach it. We had just what we needed to do it, didn't we? Yeah. All right. Well, let's pray, okay? Dear God, thank you so much for helping us to see that sometimes when we think we don't have enough, we do. It's right there with us. Help us to remember that we live in abundance and that Jesus gives us that abundance in life. We ask that you um, help us to trust you, that you will provide for us all that we need. In your name we pray. Amen. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I've been trying to think about, I've, I just have had the gathering on my mind. And so as I was thinking about uh, the gospel reading today, it really struck me that a lot of this gospel reading is about gathering about being together and as I thought about that aspect it dawned on me that there are kind of three things that we learn in this gospel reading about gathering the first is why we gather we also learn what happens when we gather and then we learn what happens when we leave and so I want to talk a little bit more about that today um, people often ask me, why is it important to come to church? I get that question, especially from younger generations. Why should I come to church? Why is it important? But there are other people, too, that ask me, older folks. Um, and there's a lot of answers that I could give, a lot of um, explanation, a lot of fun stories to help bring home the point. Um, but really, I think it all boils down to one reason that makes it different for us to gather than other organizations. Because let's face it, there are a lot of places in today's culture where we gather. We gather for sports events, baseball games, football games, soccer games, volleyball games, all sorts of different sporting events. We've got people gathered from all over the world in Paris right now. We have Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and all sorts of clubs, book clubs and things for adults to do, country clubs. We have schools, I mean, you name it, the schools have a club for it these days. So many ways that we gather together in smaller groups and in larger groups. And so what makes this gathering, us today, different from all of those things? And what I think it boils down to is one thing, and that is Christ. We gather because of Christ. This is the reason. There are maybe many ways or places we gather. We gather at church. We gather at camp. We gather in homes. A week and a half ago, we gathered for the gathering. We come together in a number of different places or locations, and there are many things that we 
uh, that we gather to do, like to worship or to serve or to learn or to eat. We gather a lot to eat, don't we? But as a church, we gather because of Christ. Because everything that we do comes from Christ, Christ's love. And it's even in our baptismal promises, we promise to live among God's faithful people. So we come together to live because of what Christ has done for us in our baptism. And the people in today's gospel reading gathered because of Christ, because they had seen what he was doing or heard what he was doing. They wanted to experience it and be a part of it. And so they gathered together 5,000 people which is 11,000 less than we had at the gathering. So there you go. What happens when we gather? So Christ is the reason why we gather. What happens when we gather? Um, the story about the 5,000, the feeding of the 5,000, I see, uh, I'm sure there are many, many different ways to see this story. Um, I see three main ones as I was preparing this week, and um, it all kind of depends on your understanding of how you read Scripture, what Scripture says, um, what it's meant for, the context. Um, so I want to share three things that, I, that this story brings to mind for me. First, um, Jesus, Jesus is told that there's um, a little boy with two fish and five loaves. And so I've often wondered, is this a story about where this little boy had these things, and maybe he thought, well, I don't have to have five loaves of bread and two fish. Maybe I could share some of mine, and, and I'll have enough, and somebody else will have enough, and then everybody else got inspired and saw, well, I, don't, I didn't think I had enough, but I have this, and I can add this. And then all of a sudden, we're realizing the abundance of what we had instead of the scarcity, instead of the worry that I didn't have enough so much so that there were 12 baskets left over. And so perhaps this story is about how we live in abundance even though we fear scarcity. And when we share, we realize that. But then I got to thinking, too, there's a lot of numbers that are really important in the Bible. 40 comes up a lot, 7, 3, a lot of numbers. So I thought, why two fish and five loaves specifically? Like it could have been a couple fish and a few loaves. It could have been had a lunch with them in a basket. There's all sorts of things that they could have described it with, but it was two fish, five loaves. So I thought, okay, I'm going to look up the numbers. So I looked up the numbers, and it was really interesting to find that two is a number that symbolizes unity or division, mostly unity. And then I found that five is the number for grace. It represents grace. And so we gather together because Christ unifies us and Christ gives us grace in that unification. And then somebody at the first service pointed out that if you add two and five together, it adds up to seven, and seven was completion or perfect. So there you go. It was a perfect gathering, a worship, a perfect way to unite everyone together, to come together in God's grace. We went to the gathering last week, and I am sure that out of those 16,000 people, there were many different views on politics, on economics, on education, on understanding of gender, on color or culture. We probably had so many, we had different gifts, different sizes and shapes of every kind, adults and youth. So many different people with so many different so many differences. But when we came together, we were able to unite and all experience God's grace. We were told over and over how beloved we were, that every person in that room mattered, that, that who we are, just as who we are, is loved by God. And we could all embrace that fullness and that feeling of God's grace and unity in that moment. But maybe it's not about sharing. Maybe it's not about numbers and symbols. Maybe it's simply that Jesus performed miracles. And this was an incredible miracle. Just as the Old Testament reading today, um, where Elisha is able to feed a lot of people with somebody's small offering. Or like the manna and quail in Exodus that is given to the people when they need food. Or like the widow's jar of oil and um, flour to make a cake. And Elijah takes it from her and says, God will provide. And so she gives her last, and then her jar never becomes empty again. So there are miracles that we read about in the Bible. But I think the bottom line is, no matter which way 
we go with this story, no matter which way we understand it, this is a story about abundance, about that we have what we need. And I think that we live in a world that's, um, well, in a, particularly in an American culture, that's full of a fear of scarcity. We worry a lot about if we're going to have enough. Do I have enough for this? Do I have enough for this? Do I have enough for this? And we also live in this culture that uh, tells us we don't have what we need. You need this, you need this, you need this, you need this. So on top of the fear of scarcity, we're told that we don't have what we need, and it just becomes this big thing. And it's interesting to note that we're probably the wealthiest country in the entire world, or at least in the top three, and we're worried about scarcity. And so I think um, we, have to, we have to remember that just like in our children's sermon, a lot of times we have exactly what we need. We have to get a little creative about it. We have to look to see it. I've been on a number of trips out of the country, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Mexico, and one of the things that I experience there is that I am filled so much with love and grace, hospitality when I'm there, and I have things to bring and things to give, but the people there feel abundantly full and live life with abundance even though they don't have what I have. And it helps me to think a little bit differently about what I really need. What do we need to live? And so I think we have to think creatively and differently about what we have and that it is in abundance. Because with Christ, there is abundance. I'm going to invite you, like Pastor Steve did last week, to turn back to the confession. So if you want to turn to page three in your bulletin. Beloved people of God and Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. We live in abundance with Christ. We hear about in the gospel today the abundance of food. We hear in Ephesians about the, the depth and breadth and width and height and the fullness of God's love and grace for us. We live with so much abundance. And so we gather because of Christ, and we understand, we learn the abundance that Christ gives us when we gather. And so then when we leave, we take that with us, that fullness with us. And I I saw the end of this story very differently today than I ever have before. There's a couple of things I want to point out. First of all, the disciples go and they get on the water and they're about three or four miles out into the water in the middle of the lake and they're tossing all around because uh, there's a great wind and I don't know, sometimes visibility, three or four miles is a long way. I bet it was hard to figure out where they were going, where they needed to be. And all of a sudden there's Jesus walking along the water coming to them. And it dawned on me that when we go out, sometimes we get a little lost or we get a little bit misguided or we have a hard time finding our direction, but Jesus comes to us to help us. And if you look at the very last line of that reading, immediately the boat, the boat reached the land toward which they were going. Jesus gets us where we need to go. Jesus comes to us and gets us where we need to go. So we take this abundance with us in material goods such as fishes and loaves, and we take this fullness of God and we share it with others, and hopefully with all of that we bring others with us the next time we gather to also experience this abundant life that is through Christ. So why do we gather because of Christ? What happens when we gather? The recognition of God is made known and we're filled beyond measure. And what happens when we leave? We take this fullness, this abundance with us to share with the world until it is once again time for us to gather. Amen.